Hello, fellow crafters. This is Yana Smokula for SimonSaysTM.com. Welcome back for another Yeepy for Yana video. In this video, I wanted to show you a handmade Christmas card that combines hot foiling with stamping. There are many tricks to foiling, many little nuances, and I'll try to cover as many of them as possible in this video. So let's get started. I'm going to use this hot foil plate and it is called Christmas Foliage. It is from my Christmas collection with Spellbinders. It is a half plate and it is designed to be foiled twice to create an A2 background. You foil it once, then you flip it and foil it once more to cover the entire card front. It is not a solid background plate to reduce the cost of the product. Now here I have several different colors in sheets of cardstock. Foiling can be very tricky and it can work splendidly on one color of cardstock, but it will give you a very hard time on a different color of cardstock. I also want to use this stamp set from Simon Says Stamp as a sentiment for my card. I have this dotted frame from Spellbinders, it's also a glimmer plate, and I'm just trying to see which of the sentiments would work for my project. Another tool I have on my desk right now is the Quick Trimmer. It is a special trimmer from Spellbinders to help you easily cut your foil and reduce foil waste. I'm going to go ahead and cut my gold foil. I usually foil with gold. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my gold foil to size. So I've placed the foil under the clear ruler and now I'm measuring how much foil I need by placing my glimmer plate on top of the trimmer. I'm getting two pieces because I will need two pieces to cover or to foil the entire card front. Now this piece is a little bit too long, so I'm going to rotate a part of my trimmer, again, place my glimmer plate on top, on, on the clear ruler measure, and cut that excess piece off. So here you can see how handy the trimmer is, as it really does help you reduce foil waste, and it also allows you to have a nice, clean cut edge on your foil, which is very handy when you're doing the hinge technique. And we will be doing a hinge technique with this particular plate to foil the background. Like I mentioned, I picked several sheets of cardstock to play with this glimmer plate. I wasn't exactly sure if the cardstock that I picked would foil well. Because whenever I foil on a new color and a new type of cardstock, I can never be sure if it will give me perfect results. So here I'm using this really nice deep dark green from Simon Says Stamp and I was planning to foil it on this paper for the very first time and I wasn't sure if it would work well. But spoiler alert, it did work perfectly. So I've trimmed my paper to size. Here I have a panel that measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm going to go ahead and use a piece of low tech tape. This is washi tape from my stash. And I'm going to tape my glimmer plate in place by creating a little hinge at the top like so. Now this glimmer plate gives you a slightly smaller design than your A2 card. It creates a really nice small border around your panel. I'm going to flip the plate away from the panel add my foil, and you can see how easily that works, and then just use another piece of low tack tape to secure the plate and the foil in place on the panel. I already have my Glimmer hot foil system nice and ready. I had it heating up on another desk for a couple of minutes now, so I'm just going to place my paper and the panel on the Glimmer and press the timer button. I also have my plates, and I always like to add one extra shim when I foil. Now this depends on your die cutting machine, so this is something that you will have to experiment and play with to see if you need to add an extra cardstock shim. Technically you don't need to, but sometimes for some types of cardstock, for some cardstock thicknesses also, you might need to add a cardstock shim to increase pressure and get better results. I've already brought my deep sea die cutting machine from Spellbinders. This is basically the same die cutting machine as Platinum 6. The timer button has stopped flashing and that means that my glimmer plate is nice and ready to foil. So I'm just going to take the platform out of the docking station and slowly send it through my die cutting machine to foil. So I'm sending it forward and then just as slowly I'm sending it back. Now, because this is a new type of cardstock for me, I'm actually going to run it back and forth a couple of times. 
because my glimmer plate is taped to the paper, I am not worried about the panel shifting and having a double foiled or like a, a foiled halo effect. Now let's take a look and see if this paper foils well. And oh my goodness, doesn't that look stunning? I mean, I honestly was not expecting the results to be this good and I was very pleasantly surprised. So a mental note, this paper works splendidly and I will be sure to use it again and again for my project for hot foiling. Now I'm just going to reposition the glimmer plate on my background and you can see how nicely it fits in place. It basically nestles into that already foiled design. So you can easily foil an entire card front for your card. Again, I'm going to use another piece of low tack tape, washi tape to secure the plate on the panel. Again, I'm creating a little hinge for myself and you want to make sure to do that when you want to foil the design in an exact place on your panel. This can also allow you to double foil should you need to. Think of this as using MISTI or a similar stamp positioner tool when stamping. When you use a MISTI, you can double stamp your images. The same with the hinge technique and the hinge method. When you have the hinge, you are able to double foil should you need to. So again, I'm just going to add my pre-cut piece of foil. And again, it's very handy to use the trimmer because I was able to cut my foil exactly to size, minimize waste. And also because my foil is cut to size, I don't have any excess foiling. I don't have overfoiling happening on my panel. I repeated the same steps. I foiled this panel in my die cutting machine and let's take a look at the result. Sometimes foil is a little bit tricky to pick up. And voila, I think that looks absolutely beautiful. I love the combination of gold foil with this dark, deep green cardstock. Now be careful when removing your plate from the Glimmer hot foil system as the plates do get quite hot and sometimes you can burn your fingers. Next, I have this beautiful dotted frame. This is from the Essentials Rectangles from Spellbinders. And I'm going to go ahead and foil that on another piece of the same color cardstock. I've already trimmed my foil to size. And again, I'm going to use the hinge method to attach the plate onto the panel and also add my foil onto this sandwich. Using another piece of low tech tape to secure everything in place. And now I'm ready to foil the frame as well. Let's take a look. I hope this turned out well. And yeah, it turned out really nice. Looks like I have just a little bit of overfoiling in between some of the dots, but I can easily remove that using a dry paintbrush or a pencil eraser. Now I just need to find a suitable die, a rectangle die in my stash to cut the frame out. I did my die cutting off camera and here I have the panel nice and ready and I can go ahead and continue building my card. So that's basically how I want the panel to sit on my background. And you can have either a portrait or a landscape card with this particular design. Now, before we move forward, I wanted to quickly show you how I store my glimmer plates. A couple of people have asked me how I store them and so I wanted to show you. I use magnetic sheets, I adhere them to a piece of chipboard, and I just basically place my plates onto those magnets. I don't sort them necessarily by set. Sometimes I group my products by theme, if that makes sense. So that's how I store my glimmer plates. I like having them on a magnetic sheet so that the plates are not flying all over the place. And I know that one magnetic sheet, for example, holds one set and then maybe some other elements that go with that set. So it's very handy to use and store the plates like that. Now for this particular card, I also want to add some additional foiled elements. And for this, I'm going to use my Christmas wreath glimmer plate and just foil a couple more pieces on a leftover piece of that same green cardstock. And once again, I'm going to use the gold foil. Now when I foil multiple pieces, and I, when I foil little pieces like these, I do foil them a little bit differently compared to how I foiled the background. For this, I prefer to place the glimmer plates on the glimmer platform and allow them to heat up. I'm going to go ahead and measure how big my panel is so that when I'm placing the plates on the platform, I have them positioned so that they will occupy the space that I have on my panel. Here, I have my little glimmer plates ready. 
I've pressed the timer button and now I need to pre-cut my foil. I actually have a bunch of leftover foil, like the little pieces that have been left over from cutting foil to size for my previous foiled experiments. So I'm going to use that instead of cutting a new piece of foil. Now, while the glimmer plates are heating up, I am not going to build my sandwich on the platform. And that's one of the key things that I do when I foil this way. Sometimes when I build my sandwich on the glimmer hot foil system right away and I don't have my dies or my plates taped in place, the dies might shift, or I keep saying dies, the plates might shift or the paper might shift. And you might end up having a double foiled effect. So to avoid that, there's a little trick that I use. So the timer button has stopped flashing. I'm going to take the platform out of the docking station and place it into my deep sea die cutting machine. Next, I'm placing a piece of foil. So this is when I start building my sandwich. Having the foil in place, I add the panel and I'm being careful so that I'm not placing something and then replacing it. And then I add my shims. I'm being careful to slowly send it through the die cutting machine and I'm using my hand to hold the plates in place so that they do not bounce off the platform. Now I do not send it back and forth or forward and back. I just send it in one direction and then I use my hand to make sure that I hold the top plates in place so that again they do not bounce on the platform and they do not hit my plates again because that can result in the double foiled effect or a halo effect. And here, this turned out really well. These foiled beautifully and I don't have the double foiling. I'm going to foil these plates one more time just because I want to have extras for my card. I'm not exactly sure how many I'll need, so I might as well foil a few. Next, I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss a sentiment for my panel. I picked one that reads Seasons Greetings and I'm going to heat emboss it in white embossing powder onto the panel that we previously foiled. Now I also have a subsentiment for this card and the subsentiment reads from our family to yours. I originally heat embossed this sentiment together with the main sentiment onto this panel using white embossing powder, but I later decided that I liked the look of red. So I added another skinny panel, skinny red cardstock panel, and that's where I had my subsentiment embossed. I think that that looked better on the finished card. I'm not showing this on video, but I just wanted to mention that for you. I used my anti-static powder tool and I prepped the panel for heat embossing by applying the powder onto the panel. Next, I inked up my clear stamps with clear embossing ink and you can see I used my Mini Misty stamping tool. Now I'm adding white detail embossing powder and I'm just going to go ahead and use my heat tool to heat set the powder and melt it in place. We're almost done. I went ahead and foam mounted the panel onto my background foil panel and the background foil panel has been already adhered onto an A2 white side folding card base. Now I'm using glue to go ahead and add my little foiled pieces onto the frame and make it a little bit more fuller. I want it to look like as of the background foil design is moving onto the sentiment panel just to make it a little bit more organic and a little bit more, I don't know, natural, I think. Now at this point, this background, while it does look nice, I think it's lacking. One of the things that I like to do when it comes to foiling on dark colors of cardstock is I like to use a white pen and I also like to use my Nouveau Drops to add dimensional accents. So here I'm using Nouveau Drops in red, this is in color red berry, and I'm adding red berries onto all of the foiled berries that I have on my background. I love the instant pop of red that this adds to the card. And that's where I got the idea to use the red panel for that subsentiment for this project. I also later used my white pen. I used a Sakura white pen in size 10, and I added white dots onto the rest of the background, coloring it in a little bit. And I think that that really added a lot of interest and a lot of beauty to this otherwise simple background. So that's it for me for today. I hope you found this video useful. If you make a card inspired by this video, We'd love it if you shared your project online and tagged us on social media. We always love seeing what you guys are making. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye.